Hi, uh, here's a lecture video overview of 3.1, and we're going to spe specify with the definition and finding the domain. There's another video clip uh, referring to functions with um, the operations of those. Uh, first of all, I want to define what a function is, but before I can do that, I have to define what a relation is. And like we talked about in class, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. So you have, those ordered pairs can be listed as a graph or just a set, or you can do it like a mapping. Um, if you look at this one, this one's a set of ordered pairs. Okay, that could or could not, uh, that, that's definitely a relation. May or may not be a function. We'll talk about the function in a minute. This is also a representation of a relation. It's just written as a mapping. Uh, it would be ordered pairs A, D, B, E, and C, E. So all these are technically a relation. As a matter of fact, equations can be written as, as a relation as well because you can come up with ordered pairs that satisfy that equation. So it would also be a relation. So that's all a relation is, just a set of ordered pairs. Now, a function is one step further. A function is a relation where for each x there is only one y. Uh, another, way, another way to put that is for each input there it produces one output or one thing in, one thing out. So it's kind of like a machine. You put so you put something into the machine, and it, it it does the machine does its thing, and it produces an output, but it only produces one output for that number you put in. So, uh, so example one uh, is referring to whether this is a function or not. So in example one, you just look at this, and two gives me three, four gives me five. So 6 gives me 3, 7 gives me 9, 8 gives me 5. Now, if you look at the second uh, order pair and the last order pair, they both have a 5 as an output. That's okay. The output can be repeated. It's just the input cannot be repeated with a different output. So you can put a, something into a machine, and somebody else put another number into a machine and pretty get the same output. And that's fine. The problem is that you, as a single person, can't put something into a machine and get two different outputs. That's the problem of a function. So this one is okay because there are no repeated x coordinates. And you're going to see that's going to be a problem with the, this, the part two of this example. So this one is a function. It's a relation uh, and it's a function. Now this next one here, I want to know if this one is a function. It's definitely a relation because it's just a set of ordered pairs. But is that relation a function? That's the question. Well, if you look at 2, 3, 5, 1, 6, 3, 2, 9, as if you notice, if you put 2 into this machine, you get two different outputs. You get the 3 and you get the 9. And so that causes a problem. And it's still a relation, but it's just not a function. So you would write not a function. And it's, it's not the 3 that causes the problem. It's the 2 that causes the problem. It's the initial 2 is on the first uh, order pair and the last order pair. So in this particular situation, somebody put 2 in the machine, and 3 comes out, and the 9 comes out. And that causes a problem. Uh, example 2 is just another uh, same thing, except it's written as a mapping. Okay, A gives me D, B gives me E, C gives me E. That is a function. So uh, you're like, well, they both go to E. Well, that's okay. Okay, so B produces only E, C produces only one thing in, one thing out, one thing in, one thing out. So this is a function. Now, let me show you what would happen or what I could do to make it not a function. If A goes to D but also to E as well, then that causes a problem. That is not a function now because A is in and now you get two items out, the D and the E. So as you can see, for a mapping to be a function, okay, there, there can only be one, you know, one arrow coming from each term. You, the moment you get two arrows coming from a single term, it's not a function. So, and sometimes you can tell whether the equation is a function or not. Okay? So if you look at x plus 2y squared equals 5, and you try to determine if, is that a function or not, well, you've got to do it with numbers. And the best way I have found is to just put a number in for the x and see how many answers you could possibly get. If you get only one answer, then you're probably going to be okay. If you get two answers, then you're not going to be okay. So if you put zero in here, you get uh, zero plus two y squared equals five. Okay, and you get two y squared equals five, and then y squared equals five halves. But when you attempt to solve for y, you have to do a square root 
of plus or uh, it's actually plus or minus the square root of five halves. Now what that is is irrelevant. But the, what the point is is plus or minus. So you'll get y equals plus or minus the square root of five halves, and the plus or minus is the issue, okay? Because you put zero in for x, and there were two y's, plus the square root and minus the square root. Too many answers, okay? Now, little quick uh, reminder: um, if the y is squared, it's never going to be a function because that's going to happen every time you try to solve for y because you're going to get a plus or minus. So y squares are not going to be functions. Anything with an absolute value around the y will not be a function. Okay, and so those are just some examples of where you're going to have some issues with this. Uh, so uh, y squares would never be functions, but you could test it by plugging the number. You're like, why did you test zero? Why not? I could test any number I want. So I put zero in, and it didn't work. So, and uh, so that one is not a function. Okay, but the original example I had without this arrow right here, because this was the original problem example too, now that was a function. Okay, so now the next one, example three, find the domain. Now remember, this is the exact same print problem as this one over here, and it is a function. And finding the domain of a function is very simple. It's uh, just the x coordinates when you just got them in the list. So 2, 4, 6, 7, and 8, that's your domain. Now, something that is not on here is the range. Now, the range is also is called the y coordinates. So the domain is the x coordinates, and the range is the y coordinates. So that's the idea. And uh, so the domain is two, four, six, seven, and eight. That's your x's, and the range is your y's: three, five, three again, uh, nine, and five. Those are the range elements. And again, we discussed this, all of this in class, and that's why you need to come to class. We do this very quickly on these little overview uh, lectures. Now, f of x equals x squared minus 9, what is the domain of that one? Okay, well, if you put a number in, square it, and subtract 9, as you could probably very well guess, you're going to get an answer. If you put 5 in, you get 5 squared minus 9, it's like 16. So there really isn't a number that I can think of that if you square it and subtract 9, that I don't get an answer. Now, some of the numbers may not be very nice, but they're still numbers. So when you're looking for domain of a given function that's already in that notation, it's going to be uh, uh, easy when it's just like a polynomial like that one is. So x squared minus 9, that domain is all real numbers. The problem occurs when you get problems like g of x down here. g of x is 1 over 2x minus 4, and that's a fraction. And if you ever have fractions, one thing you always remember, you always cannot divide by zero. And so this one right here, if x was 2, you'd be divided by zero because 2 times 2 minus 4 is zero on the bottom. So the domain here is it will take any number except for 2. So I think of functions as like Coke machines. Okay? The domain of Coke machines is what, what's allowed for that machine. So if you go down the hallway of, your, of the Cheek Hall, and you put your money in it, it won't take any kind of money, it won't take pennies, so it's not in this domain. But it takes certain like dollar bills, it might take your zip card, if you have an account here, it takes that as your domain. So these machines will take certain things, but it won't take other things. Functions in mathematics is the same way. This machine will take anything, but this one will not, because it will not take two. And so when you look for the domain out there, you would just say it's all real numbers, except for the number two. And this one is just simply all round numbers. Now, one thing I didn't talk about here that I did talk about in class is the notation. Uh, the notation is f of x, or you could call it g of x. A lot of people call it f of x because the word function begins with the letter f, but it doesn't always have to be. You could call it g of x, h of x, it really doesn't matter. So, uh, but the name of the function. So, if you have a Pepsi machine here at Missouri State, uh, it's the name of that, you might want to call it p for Pepsi. So Pepsi of dollar sign, because that's the number that, that's what it takes is money. So uh, this function is a function, the name is F, as opposed to Pepsi, and then X is what it takes. It's the input values. So, so if you had P of dollar sign, that's kind of like a function, okay? P stands for Pepsi, and the dollar sign says, what, what does the Pepsi machine take? It takes money. So F of X. It takes uh, it, the name of the machine is F, and the values that it take are the input values, in this case, X. So, 
Anyway, uh, this is the conclusion of the domain and the definition.